As I was hearing some of the speakers, I thought, oh, well, I'm going to say that, and I'm going to say that. And I think that just shows you that in actual fact, this new age movement is nothing that is absolutely concrete in little compartments here and here. It all flows and intertwines. It's really a little bit like a plate of spaghetti. And there's, it's very hard to find the beginning and the end of everything. You see, I come across people within our church, within the Anglican church, who say, New Age, what is New Age? And other people who talk about New Age and they're aware about, of it, but they don't actually understand, well, why has it got this title, New Age? And it is, comes from a belief that there are astrological ages lasting about 2,000 years, and they say that now we are in the transition between the age of Pisces, the age of the fish. And remember that the fish is the symbol of Christianity. So we're in the transition from the age of the fish, the age of Pisces, corresponding to Christianity, and to the age of Aquarius, the water carrier who is said to represent the reappearance of a Christ who will pour the life-giving water of the Spirit on the world. And when they talk about a Christ, and this is one of the difficulties within the New Age movement, they use our terminology. And when they talk about the Christ, they are not talking about the Christ as we understand, the Son of God, the Messiah. They are talking about a status. Christ is a status. Humanity, it is asserted, by means of a quantum evolutionary leap. You'll hear that word used in the New Age, talking about a quantum leap. This is what they mean. That will acquire then the attributes which heretofore have you been associated with God. And uh, Dale talked about this consciousness and how the importance of meditation was. Now you'll hear, I'll use the term consciousness throughout this talk because it is... Uh, it is a term that is widely used within the New Age movement. And also to reiterate that behind the New Age movement is Satan's desire to be worshipped as God. That's why we can't have any part of it as Christians. Now the key to the New Age movement, and remember I said, you know, it's really like a plate of spaghetti, the key to it is networking, because the New Age movement has no hierarchical structure per se. It is compiled of a whole lot of networks. Its centre is everywhere. There's no headquarters. There's no given leader at the top of it. It's everywhere. Its centre is everywhere. And so they've done it. It's, it's done in such a way that it's not dependent on any one person or any one group. The networks that they use can achieve social clout on a grassroots level without reliance on party politics. Now we say that in, in the Christian circle, and certainly within the Anglican church, we say if there's any going to be any life in the Anglican church, any life, any movement in the spirit of God, we say it's going to come from the grassroots up rather than the brass hats down. And that is the premise of the New Age movement too, that they're working through their networks from the grassroots up. The other thing about New Age is that they're not as united, perhaps at this stage, as what we might be given to think, because just like Christians, they have, people have presuppositions and egos get in the way, and so there are often, you know, different, differing perspectives can have a lack of cooperation. So they're not all uh, geared and uh, completely united with one another. But the kind of enlightened society that they are wanting, it's an enlightened global society they desire, can never be realised apart from a radical transformation of human nature. Now, they themselves know that. And as Christians, we know that the only way we're going to have that transformation is through being born again in the spirit of Jesus Christ. The New Ages know we need this transformation, and so they talk about 
having with that they need a paradigm shift. There's another new age buzzword, paradigm shift. That's to a completely different way of thinking about things, of approaching things. And so we need what they call a consciousness revolution. And there's that word again, consciousness re revolution. The care of our natural resources is a legitimate issue, but divorced from the Bible, it very quickly becomes idolatry. And so as we look at those th uh, various aspects that I've put before you of the Christian view and the New Age view, we as Christians believe, remember that our, the Bible opens with the words, God created the heavens and the earth. So all that exists is not part of God. Creation is different in substance and nature from God. And as Romans 1 verse 20 says, it was created by him to declare his glory. God has a plan, a purpose, and a direction for it. And God, the, the New Ages talk about the universe as being God. It isn't. God is apart from, he transcends the universe, he transcends his creation, he is above it. And so as Christians, we have this God who is personal, he is personal. In the Bible it said that God said, let us create man in our own image. Now each one of us is a personal being, and we have been created in the image of God, therefore God is personal and we can have a relationship with him. You cannot have a relationship with a tree, but you can have a relationship with God. <laughs>